Julia Blake and I run Blake Consultants and we help businesses unlock their growth potential by having the right systems and processes in place that really underpin their business. There are three systems that I call the holy grail for micro, small and medium sized businesses and they are Capsule, CRM, MailChimp and Xero. And when they are set up properly and integrated, they really do underpin your business and they provide huge benefits to you and your business. So what we're looking to do is remove the days of feast and famine. We want to help business owners not get stressed about the fact they don't have enough clients because they will have the right number of clients. And we want business owners to stop worrying about the, having too many clients and not being able to look after them properly. So if you want to be more productive, more organized, less stressed and make more money, then keep watching because I'm going to show you how Capsule CRM will help do all of those things. And when it's integrated with MailChimp and Xero, it will do it even more. So this is the first in a series of four videos. And in this video, I'm going to give an overview of Capsule and I'm going to show you how to set up a simple system that will support your business. The second video is going to be all about creating lists and dicing and slicing the contact information that you have on your capsule CRM. I'm going to show you how you can create a list and push it through to MailChimp so that you can send out a targeted campaign to a segment of your contacts. In the third video, I'm going to show you how to manage your pipeline. And sales are absolutely vital for all businesses, but none more so than micro, small and medium sized businesses. And so many business owners keep their pipeline in their head, yet Capsule can manage this for you. It's absolutely brilliant how it does it. Um, it's really a game changer. So I'm going to show you how you can really use Capsule to manage your pipeline and actually maximize the chance of converting a sales opportunity into an actual sale. In the fourth video, I'm going to show you how to use cases in Capsule to help manage your work your deliverables and what you actually provide to your clients. Not only that, it can also help you run events. So there's some brilliant functionality that I'm going to show you how um, you can that you can use to do that and that's going to be in the fourth video. Now key to all of these things is knowing who your ideal client is because if you don't know who your ideal client is then you won't understand what their pain points are and you won't be able to offer them a solution to solve their pain. So if you don't know who your ideal client is, or if you haven't been through this process recently, then do click on this link or the link in the comments below to access um, a useful piece of collateral, which will go through the step-by-step -step guide to actually helping you work out who your ideal clients are. And when you, when you know who your ideal client is, then you're gonna be able to communicate with them in a way that resonates and you'll have a much better chance of them actually hearing what you have to say and thinking of you when they want to find a solution to their problems, okay? So as promised, we're gonna have a look at Capsule CRM and see why it's such a great system for micro, small and medium sized businesses. Capsule CRM itself has been around for over 10 years and has got thousands and thousands of users all over the world. I've got international clients as well as clients based in the UK. It particularly works, well, it works particularly well for service-based um, organizations, uh, product-based organizations do use it as well, and it can be used in the B2C and the B2B space. So let's have a closer look. Sometimes it's a good idea to have a look at systems a little bit behind the scenes before you actually delve into the bit of software. So what I'm going to do here is show you how Capsule actually supports businesses. And we're thinking very much about along the lines of trying to reduce feast and famine in your business. Um, how to be more efficient, how to save time, how to be more productive, um, and how to be more productive with the, 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 the time that you have. So Capsule is brilliant. It has three main areas. The data bank, where um, you keep all your contacts, organizations, and people, and all the information about them. And that ties really nicely into understanding who your ideal client is. Because if you don't understand who your ideal client is, then it's very difficult to build any of these systems. You may end up capturing information or data about um, organizations that you really don't need. So really think about who your ideal client is, uh, their profile and uh, your ideal client avatar. Capture three main areas, the data bank, 
then opportunities where we manage a pipeline and cases where you can manage the work that you deliver. So it's brilliant. And I think of a CRM as a contact relationship management system rather than client relationship management, which is what typically and historically it's been. But actually, when you think of it as contact relationship management, then it opens up so many other doors. Okay, so the data bank is where you store um, your contact data. It's the central storage place, and in fact, it's where you can start to do your marketing. Then opportunities is where you manage your pipeline and manage sales and encourage people um, to go along your um, sales process and encourage leads to convert to sales in the most efficient way. And we'll be covering um, the pipeline in more detail in video three. And then cases, which is where you can really manage your deliverable work and you can manage events. So we can set up a series of tasks that move forward or a series of tasks that work backwards. And we'll be covering that in more detail in video four. Now, three main areas of capture, the data bank, the pipeline, the cases, and they ask, so information flows into the data bank and then hopefully it will move into um, an opportunity will be created for that, con for that contact, for that person, that organization. And then hopefully that will convert into some deliverable work and then the whole thing can start again and you can encourage people along your product staircase. That is support supported financially by Zero. I talk a lot about the holy grail of systems for micro, small and medium sized businesses. Capsule is one, Zero is the other and MailChimp is the third. So Zero supports the finances and integrates beautifully and MailChimp supports um, the communication. So you can send out really sophisticated communication um, to a targeted um, segment of your, um, your, your database in effect. So you're really starting to resonate um, with the people that you're sending the, the, um, your communication to. So when they identify that they have a need, they'll think of you. MailChimp is brilliant because you can set up different automations so you can have a nice sales funnel going on. And we're going to think more about creating lists in Capsule and pushing them through to MailChimp in the second video that's um, in this series of four videos. So let's have a look at Capsule itself. So this is the typical login screen for Capsule and I have created a demonstration version to show you guys today. So we're going to log in and we come straight into the dashboard. And on the left hand side, we have a list of all the tasks that are either overdue or that are due to happen in the next seven days. And that's all the tasks. So you can set up separate tasks on the data bank, separate tasks on your opportunities and separate tasks on your cases. So this consolidates all those tasks and it's a brilliant to do list as well as a two day list. So what you can do with that well, sorry, what Capsule does is actually send you an email each morning telling you which tasks are due that day. And you can click through and go straight into the system and um, start working on the tasks. Then on the right hand side or middle to right, we've got a chronological list of everything that's going on. So any emails that are copied to the system because you can use the um, bespoke or sorry, unique Dropbox email address that Capsule gives you and you can copy emails directly to the system and there's some really lovely advanced functionality on the email at Dropbox so um, we'll um, I can let you know more about that um, as we move through but this area also captures any tasks that are completed any MailChimp campaigns that have gone out so it's a really really useful area then at the top in the maroon bar at the top we have different areas of capture so we're in the dashboard and then we have people and organizations. That's really the data bank part I was talking about. We've got a fantastic calendar and tasks area as well, which we're, we are just going to uh, move straight over to. It, it is brilliant and you can integrate it, but it's a, a whole separate area in its own rights. And then we have the sales pipeline, which we're going to be covering in video three. And then we have cases and then we have some nice reports as well. So we can actually see um, contacts that um, we've most recently clicked into. Um, and so we can go into those if we want, or we can do a nice search and click through there. Okay, so we have some really nice functionality in Capsule that help us really bespoke this system and make it our own. And I'm gonna just nip back and take another bird's eye view to show you how that looks 
So we've seen there are three main areas of capture. The first is the data bank. Organizations hang off of the data bank and we have custom fields that we can create for each organization. And they can be free text or number or date. Um, you can put URLs into there so you can hyperlink them. Um, and um, we can set up bespoke custom fields to really make your system your own. In addition to that, we have tags, and this is a way of um, dicing and slicing the data that we have in Capsule. So we can have multiple tags on an organization. So perhaps we would have client or client potential or supplier or networking, uh, that type of thing. So really, we're really thinking here about who your ideal client is, how what your business model looks like, etc. But we can have multiple tags on each organization. In addition to that, we have what's called a data tag. Now, a data tag is absolutely brilliant because it has custom fields that hang off of it. So perhaps you had a data tag that was client and you wanted to record when they purchased something or what they had purchased, what they bought off you. So we can do that here. Okay, then we have people. And people can either hang off of organizations or if there isn't an organization associated with that person, then they um, are just the um, they, they can sit there in their own right. And then hanging off of people, we have custom fields in the same way we do with organizations, but we can have custom fields that are for both organization or person, or we can have a custom field that is just for the person. And then again, we have tags and we have data tags. So we can really start capturing some really specific information um, that will help our businesses grow. So the data tag, we have custom fields. So we have tags and custom fields that relate to the data bank part of Capture. And then it's even better than that, we have opportunities, so the pipeline. And we have custom fields that hang off of opportunities. And we have tags that can be applied to opportunities. Again, you can have more than one tag. So what you can start doing here is really thinking about your revenue streams and actually managing different revenue streams by being very clever with, with tags. And then we can have data tags. Perhaps there's particular information that you need to capture uh, whilst you are in the lead sales process. Um, and so you can set up custom fields that relate to those data tags. And then it's the same with cases. This is where we can manage the work that we deliver. It's quite a nice sort of high level project management tool. So we can have custom fields that hang off of cases and we can have tags that are, can be applied and used for cases. And the same thing, we can have data tags and we can have custom fields that come off those data tags. So when we're design, designing a bespoke capture CRM that really helps support your business, we need to think in this way. We've got the lovely contacts in the data bank, and then we've got opportunities. So that's your managing your sales pipeline. And then we have cases and we can be very clever about what information we capture in which of those areas. OK, so just going back then. OK, so let's have a look at the first person here, Bob Smith. So what we've got here is the contact record. And we can see that Bob Smith works at the Snowdrop organization. And I've created some tags to show you. Um, so these are tags that are related to the data bank parts. We've got client active and perhaps Bob is also an introducer. And what you can do is you can edit tags and you can add multiple tags. So perhaps Bob is an industry expert as well. And then we've got different contact details here. Now, these are my own contact details, um, obviously for um, data privacy, et cetera, that I'm not going to this is a made up person, but I'm not going to stick anything else in. Um, anyway, so we've also captured Bob's role. So we have our ideal clients, so they may be an organization, but when we're trying to connect with our ideal clients, we have to think about the people that work at the organizations because it's the people that sign off the work, of course. So we have to think about what pains the um, the person, the actual ideal client avatar is experiencing so that we can offer them a solution for their pain and then they'll hopefully buy a product from us. So Bob is um, head of L&D and he's also an introducer and this is a data tag. So when we apply this data tag, we have the opportunity to add some more information and that's been set up behind the scenes. OK, so we'll have a look, a look at that in a minute. If we move into the middle part of the screen, we can see we've got one open case, 
there hasn't been any contact with Bob. If there had been, the date of the contact would be would be up there. And we've got pipeline worth eight thousand pounds. Now we've integrated the um, capture with Zero, so we could actually export this contact record to Zero if we wanted to send an invoice. And that's brilliant. It just saves so much time. If that contact was already in Zero and they had been invoiced, then there would be a figure here which would say how much they've been invoiced, and you can drill down and see what the invoices actually are. So that's it's just absolutely brilliant. So it's so useful. You get a bird's eye view, a top level view of everything that is going on for this this contact, this Bob Smith or whoever it is. Then we can look at the history, which is what we're in at the moment. We can upload files. We can drill down into the opportunities. We've got test and test two for um, the Snowdrop organization. And we can look at what cases that we're managing for um, Bob Smith or for the Snowdrop operation, um, organization. So we've got loads of information here, real top level view. And this is where we can start really just drilling down into things and just finding out um, what's going on and, and making some really good efficiencies within our business. Then on the right hand side, we have tasks and we can add a task here. So we can add a recurring task or we can add a one off task. Perhaps we just want to touch base with Bob um, to find out um, how his you know, discussion about something was going on. So we can set up, stick it in for the 31st and on the 31st we'll be reminded and then we can set up, um, we can identify a category. So perhaps it's a follow up and all of these tasks feed into the brilliant calendar that we touched on so very briefly earlier. And that's why the color coding is really useful because if you've got a fair few tasks in your calendar, then you can really um, start to um, get, it can get very confusing. So the color coordination is perfect. You can also drill down and just uh, see all of your follow up tasks that you or all of your invoices that are due to be sent out. You can really, really be very clever about it. So, Bird's eye view of Bob Smith, we can see that he's an active client, he's an industry expert, and he's an introducer, so a very important person. And uh, we've got the contact details there. We we know he's the head of L&D, so um, we could actually create a list, which was what we'll be talking about in video two. We could create a list of heads of L's and D's, L&D, if we wanted to communicate with those, type, with those people. And then we could add some background information if we wanted to. And we've got a data tag here, which is an introducer. So that popped up asking us for more information. And in the middle, we've got a brilliant view of what's going on. And on the right hand side, we've got tasks. And this looks very similar for an organization. So I'm going to click through to the organization. And we can see here that the Snowdrop organization is an active client. And we've been able to choose an industry. So this is a custom field that sits on the organization that I've created just to show you. So what we can have is a list of industries. So you may only be interested, you may be very niche and you may only be interested in working with clients that are in a particular industry. So it's important to capture what industry they're in so that you could actually exclude some, some industries from your communication when you send out. So I've created some industries here. So let's um, say that the Snowdrop organization is business consultancy. We can easily edit it, easily change it and they're an active client. So we have a choice of the products they've purchased, when they purchased it, when they became a client, and we can add phone numbers, email addresses, websites, Twitter accounts, etc., for the organization. And then hanging off the organization are the people that work there. So Bob is one, but there could have been more than one. And so you could actually open all of the employees as a list and you could communicate with all of those employees. You could send them an email or if this was um, integrated with MailChimp, which it's not at the moment, then it would you could push the list through to MailChimp. You could add a tag to everybody or a note to everybody. So really efficient use of, of time there. Okay, so how do we set up these custom fields and these tags? Well, we have to go over to account settings. And on the left-hand side, we have custom fields and tags. And task categories, that's where we have the um, color coordination in the tasks. So we can click on custom fields. And in this system, I've got various created already. So I've got a checkbox for the, which product they might be interested in, whether they're a champion, and that's just for people. So you'll have people in your, um, in your contacts, people that you know who are real champions of yours. And it's really important to identify them and, and keep in contact with them because if they move to a new company, for example, 
then they may be interested in getting you um, an introduction into that new company. So it's really important to identify what, what relationship you have with these people. So whether they're a champion or a decision maker or a budget holder, for example. And then role is really about um, what they do within the organization, okay? So head of L&D or marketing director or business owner, that type of thing. Because there are so many different job titles out there that actually searching on a job title makes it really, really, really hard. It's easier to think of some roles that the person has. So we also have things like opted into newsletter, really important from a GDPR perspective, the date they opted in and how they opted in. Equally important, we've got whether they're B2B, B2C, B2CB, that means you've got a personal email address, but you know they work at a business. So the idea would be that you reach out to them and get their business address or whether they're unknown. So for example, you can't communicate um, with people that are B2C unless you've asked them, um, well, unless they have opted in. So it's very important to ascertain whether they are B2B or B2C. And you can capture all of that on Capture. And we can see, we can do it for people and organizations or just for people or just for organizations. And then we have tags. So as we looked up, as we saw in the um, diagram earlier, we have tags for people and organizations, tags for opportunities and tags for cases. And we can have data tags. So client active is a data tag. So I've created these tags literally by just clicking on add new tag. And we can just click on client active. And then we can add some custom fields that hang off of that data tag. So when that data tag is applied, then these areas pop up and encourage the user to add the information. Okay, so that is a whistle stop tour of how to set up Capsule, how it all links together and how you can actually make a system very much your own. So how do you add a contact after you've done that? Well, you can do an import, which is the most efficient way of doing it, or you can add a person or an organization from this screen. So let's go to organization and we get a blank screen. So let's just put in ABC limited and we can add a tag. So let's put potential and we can add some additional fields. What are they interested in? What industry there are they? So let's have a look at the industry. Let's say that they are in um, information and communication and we can add people that work here quite nice and efficiently. So let's do, oh, I can't type today, John Smith, there you go. And perhaps John is the, um, I don't know, consultant. And we'd add the email address there phone numbers, etc. And this phone number here is for the organization itself, not for the person. And we can add lots of different information there and we press save. So we've now added an organization and we've got one person that works there. So what we can do is just add another. And let's think maybe it's an orchard and we can add a tag here. Perhaps that person is an industry expert. And then we could add this information about an orchard that would be different or the same as the um, organization details. So the information that you put in, um, the, the tags that you add to the organization don't cascade down, which is a good thing. Uh, sometimes you want to tag a person differently to the organization that they work at. So Anne has opted in to receive the newsletter. She opted in today and she opted in um, via email and she is a B to B. So we can capture all of that information and then press save. And we can see then Anne has got this extra information in the middle of the screen down here. So we've got lots of lovely, useful information, very respectful, very compliant with GDPR. And we know that um, Anne works here. We know the date that she was added and uh, there hasn't been any contact, but had there, um, had there been, and that would pop up here. So we've got a brilliant overview of Anne and the organization that she works for. So what we've got here in the middle is this Dropbox email address. So if you copy that Dropbox email address, if you BCC it on an email, 
then the copy, a, a copy of the email will come into Capture for you. So it's really useful. You can also um, kickstart tasks or create opportunities by making a change to the Dropbox email address by removing this and adding some more sophisticated um, terminology. And that is such a massive time saver. It's absolutely brilliant. So I've given you a whistle stop tour, an overview of Capsule and shown you how you can set it up yourself. Um, I've shown you how there's a data bank side a part, a pipeline part, and a cases part. The next video coming up in the series of four is um, all about creating lists and pushing the, those lists through to MailChimp. So do have a look at that. It's really useful, lots of useful stuff there. And the third video is going to look at managing the pipeline and the fourth video as to how to you can make the most of cases. So pipeline and cases is where you can really start saving time and being more efficient and leading people through a process that's been proven and tested so you're giving consistent service and you aren't having to reinvent the wheel every single time that you do something so that's really um helping um you be more productive with with the time that you've got and give great service and of course when you give great service then people are going to refer you and there's no better recommendation than um personal recommendation of, of, of course so um and the marketing so the um reaching out on mailchimp and how it all links together is covered in the next video so i hope that you have found this video useful and um do um hang around <laughs> because we will be going on to the um next video but i just wanted to say thank you for uh joining me today so in this video we've seen how the data bank part of capture can really help um, you be more efficient and uh, reduce the feast and famine it's been a very top level introduction to capture but hopefully you've seen how it could be of benefit for your business uh, if you would like to um, ask me questions or if you'd like to connect with me, then please do. Um, I do a, I have a growth hack bulletin, which has loads of useful helps and tips. And I have a um, avatar ebook, which you can download, or you can arrange time to have a chat. I'm always happy to help. I hope you found this video useful and do hang around and video two will hopefully be popping up soon. So thank you for joining me.